Good morning, or actually good evening. It's good morning for me because I just got back from overseas, from Palestine. And uh, it is morning over there, as my, well, it's kind of early morning. It's about 2.30 in the morning, so uh, my uh, internal clock still thinks that I'm supposed to be uh, asleep now. Of course, I uh, just got back uh, from a trip to uh, Palestine. And uh, every time I go there, it's like, even though I, I lived the, um, the action over there, and I lived the history, but yet every time I go, there is like a profound um, experience that I acquire every time I go. And uh, I was uh, lucky, of course, to uh, make it in and out uh, peacefully with no problems. Uh, I met a lot of uh, new friends. I visited many, many cities in uh, Palestine, and I appreciate all the uh, people and all the friends that I made over there, the new ones, and I appreciate the old ones. Of course, um, I was not able to please everyone while I was there because uh, just a lot of people wanted to uh, visit with me and I, unfortunately I was not able to uh, oblige to uh, everyone, but um, uh, it went fine. Uh, the, uh, the trip over there is long and um, had uh, a lot of things to do over there and uh, a lot of good food uh, to eat. It's an area that is uh, well known for its uh, taste of food, you know, taste of, of its fruits. It's just everything, uh, fruits and vegetables, they just have, uh, uh, it, it, it has like different taste to it. I don't know if it's the water or if it's the soil or if it's the sun or if it's all of the above, but uh, something definitely is uh, different. And uh, I appreciate everyone who um, given me uh, something. Uh, a lot of people had uh, uh, presented me with things from uh, Palestine, like this uh, shawl right here I received from uh, the uh, Almanar, um, uh, which is a, a women organization in uh, Jerusalem. It's a women's organization that deals with, uh, believe it or not, um, violence against women. And uh, it deals with uh, women's issues under the occupation, under the Israeli occupation. Because uh, it's been over 40 years now that the Palestinians in Jerusalem, in East Jerusalem that is, has been under uh, a brutal Israeli occupation. And, of course, you know, the rest of Palestine has been under Israeli occupation for uh, over 60 years now. And it's, uh, it's amazing that 60 years later, uh, the story and the people and things have remained very much fresh in the minds of the Palestinian people. And, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, forgotten, or probably people don't know the real story behind Palestine and the Palestinians because the uh, Palestinians have been portrayed in the uh, Jewish media and when I say Jewish media that probably um, includes all media that you watch out there except of course this channel uh, but um, uh, if it's not Jewish owned or managed it's uh, Jewish manipulated and uh, definitely they will present the story to you uh, in a different way in uh, uh, a way where uh, it's, it becomes a totally different story, not the reality on the ground. And uh, I appreciate the, uh, this is a cup from Hebron. It's the, uh, the uh, uh, Abraham uh, Mosque in Hebron, which is uh, incidentally something that um, the Israelis, uh, the Israeli government just announced last week that it is including the Abraham Mosque, even though it's a Muslim uh, historic place and uh, it's built for like hundreds of years uh, as an Islamic mosque, but yet Israel had included it in its uh, Jewish historical uh, registry, uh, among other 
uh, site in uh, Palestine that is purely Islamic and it was built in uh, Islamic times. They, uh, but of course, you know, if you have the bigger guns and you control the people, you can do anything uh, you want. So I appreciate all. I could not bring everything that I brought back with me, but uh, I like this. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it's from Palestine and it's something nice, something neat. And of course, I um, enjoy everything. But anyway, I um, the, the the profound experience, ladies and gentlemen, I got uh, when I when I visited a uh, an old village. Uh, the village is not there anymore. It's nothing but fields. And if we uh, got some of those pictures in, um, uh, let's go ahead and show some of these pictures in the uh, in the fields. Uh, which is, uh, let me know, if, if do we have those pictures? Okay. Yeah, let's show those pictures in, uh, uh, okay. Look, this here, it's the last picture, so let's go ahead and just kind of go through them. Um, uh, beautiful um, scenery and uh, beautiful um, landscaping. I uh, enjoyed myself uh, tremendously. Um, an old, old olive tree. The, these olive trees are probably, uh, I don't know how old they were, but uh, they're at least over uh, probably 100 years old. And uh, so uh, beautiful uh, landscaping and beautiful fields. And uh, the, the, the only thing, ladies and gentlemen, where those fields actually... Um, uh, if if you can just keep going with the um, with those pictures, uh, uh, no, not these, not these, the the old the, the other pictures exactly. Just keep showing those pictures, because on this particular site, this is at the site of an old village, a Palestinian village called uh, Burwa, and uh, it's this village you don't see it anymore because it's not there anymore. A few rocks, actually, if you dig deep down be uh, beneath the uh, the grass, uh, you will see, you see, wherever you see those olive trees in, in the background, and uh, also I have some pictures with uh, cactus uh, trees, actually, behind me. Uh, if you have some of those pictures with the cactus uh, uh, trees. Uh, now, we have other pictures, if you uh, can get to them. Uh, uh, the, 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 this, this, this is where a whole village actually used to exist back in 1948. And uh, what happened in 1948 is the uh, Israelis went into this Arab village, these Palestinian villages, and massacred people in those villages, destroyed their homes, uh, forced them to flee their homes and their land, and they went into neighboring countries, and basically they were able, uh, they were uh, put in uh, tents, like you saw. Uh, people tried to grab as whatever they can. They tried to grab their children, because uh, and, and just run, uh, get out of town. Uh, that's basically what uh, these Palestinians had done back in 1948 because the uh, the, the, the Jewish uh, thugs, these, these thugs with guns, uh, they would go into uh, a Palestinian village, which was an unarmed village, and start uh, bombing uh, homes and killing people. And of course, you know, the people have uh, no choice but to flee. But if we can go back to the first pictures we showed, this is, this is what, back in 1948 when the Palestinians were fleeing uh, their homes to be put in those tents. And by the way, it's, uh, now this is a massacre actually that uh, the Israelis have committed against the uh, Palestinians uh, back in 1948. And uh, uh, when the news of those massacres uh, got into other villages uh, in the uh, surrounding areas, uh, people uh, just grabbed their children, grabbed whatever they can, and started running because their homes were burnt, their homes were destroyed. And uh, 
but now over 500 villages were destroyed by Israel. Uh, some of these villages were totally destroyed and erased completely off the face of the earth. Uh, just like the village that I visited, if we can put some of these earlier pictures we've shown with the uh, pretty landscaping and uh, pretty trees in the back. I was hoping to show some of these cactus trees in the back, but apparently you can't get to those pictures for some reason. But if we can show some of the pictures, yeah, those pictures. Um, th this is, like I started saying, this is in the village of Berwa. And this village is no more there. It does not exist. The only thing you see is very much few rocks and I was able to make out a um, uh, the, the shape of a squared building that one time existed on this ground, on these grounds and I was told that that was the old church that existed in the village. Now there, there are no, no more homes in the village. All you see is just the uh, these fields with wildflowers. Uh, what you see there is just wildflowers, and where homes, you know, behind me, uh, behind me, homes used to exist, just in this field that you're looking at behind me, used to be homes where actually in this little village where Muslims and Christians have lived for hundreds of years. And then overnight, the Jews came in in 1948, killed whatever people they did, and uh, the rest of the people uh, fled. They, uh, they were forced to flee their homes, and their homes were bombed, and nothing left in, the, in this town uh, of Doha. And unfortunately, uh, this scene has repeated itself over and over and over again. Over, like I said, over 500 villages so very much the same fate as this village did. And uh, all that was left is basically uh, these olive trees and some uh, cactus trees uh, that um, you probably can see on, on the right-hand side there in the, uh, in the background. Well, anyway, uh, this was a profound experience for me because I, I was, this was like the first time that I actually visited the site of a village, the site of where a village used to be, the site of... You know, there's this olive tree, if it can talk, it will tell us uh, stories of uh, people that had once lived on this land, uh, people that had um, uh, very much used this uh, olive tree to survive, because uh, olive trees is uh, a uh, something that is of uh, importance. In the uh, in Palestine, uh, it's it's importance for many many reasons, and and uh, Palestine is well known for its olives and its olive oil, uh, but uh, so you know the the profound experience that I had while walking down these fields and looking beneath these wild flowers for traces of uh, buildings, and uh, you know I was able to actually see. Uh, the old rocks uh, and uh, whatever is left there, of course, not much left, but uh, you're able to see that, you know, what uh, people lived here. And we're not talking about ancient, uh, you know, uh, we're not talking about a period of thousands of years here. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, we're looking for ruins from the Babylonian uh, era or uh, the Egyptian era. We're talking about 60 years ago. We're talking about 1948 when people actually lived on this land, the land of Palestine, both uh, Muslims and Christians, and were forced to flee um, because they've, if they did not, they would have been uh, massacred. But the, 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 the profound experience that I felt is 1948, this was like four years after 1944. And if you remember, the Jews were able to sell the world the story of the Holocaust and the world sympathized with the Jews and thousands of them actually went from Europe to Palestine 
And the world just accepted that fact because they sympathized with the Jews, you know, those poor Jews who went through the... That's, the, uh, that's okay, but what people did not know that these Jews were going into these villages that have been there for thousands of years. These Palestinians that have lived on those villages for thousands of years. And they were massacred. Um, ethnic cleansing was taking place. But unfortunately, the world did not realize what was happening. And if they did see what was happening, uh, the Jews were able to give the world a story. Because, now remember, they, 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 they did control the media, and uh, they still do. So they were able to give you a story um, that you accepted. You know, you, you, you accepted the fact that Palestinians mean nothing when it comes to uh, Jewish life. And you accepted that these Palestinians become refugees. They still are over 60 years. They still live in refugee camps, even though they used to live in their homes. And these Palestinians had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the Holocaust, nothing to do with uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the sad thing about this, you see, even though Israel was established back in 1948, but Jews had uh, migrated into Palestine before 1948. They started going there in the uh, beginning of the century because they were very much oppressed in European countries. And the Palestinians accepted those Jews because they were fleeing oppression in Europe. And they accepted them. They had taken them without realizing that the Jews had a different plan in mind. And uh, 1917, when the uh, British and the uh, French won First World War, uh, Palestine was very much given to the Jews through the uh, Balfour Declaration. Uh, so England uh, very much handed that country to the Jews and allowed them to uh, immigrate to Palestine by the scores. That's when the Palestinians realized that, well, wait a minute, you know, these Jews that we allowed to come into the country because they were oppressed, uh, they're here to take over the country. Uh, unfortunately for the Palestinians, it was a little bit too late, and unfortunately, uh, and instead of uh, paying them back nicely for uh, receiving those oppressed Jews from Europe. And by the way, they were not oppressed by the Muslims. They were oppressed by uh, the Christian world. So the, the Muslim world uh, kind of took them in. But uh, unfortunately, they had something else because as soon as they uh, uh, gathered in numbers and they were well equipped and uh, well armed, they started killing the Palestinians and kicking them off their land, as uh, we saw this, the, uh, you know, in those pictures, uh, all these fields behind me used to be homes. And like I said, over 500 villages, Palestinian villages, actually um, uh, met the same fate. And we are going to show uh, some of these stories with uh, different villages um, to, to show you exactly uh, what took place back in 1948 when the uh, so-called State of Israel was uh, established. So let's go ahead and play some of these uh, videos uh, to show exactly what took place.
You know, th this is a park actually um, where a village once um, existed. that remain, there are others. This is a house. This house is a spring in the Mikveh, Jewish ritual. And we visit And this is where the village of Serene once existed. people just walking in to your village or city and forcing people to flee their homes, leave their dead behind. These are graves for people who once dwelled on this land. village used to uh, exist. People lived 
for thousands of years on this land. And one day in 1948, under the point of the gun, were forced to leave everything behind. This is another village. This is the antiques here. Kubeba. A cave or a cistern. talking about ancient ruins here. We're talking about 60 years ago. Another village. Bashit. This is the south of the Meshav Aseret. We see the Maqam. There are bats living inside the building. Covered with cacti, eucalypt trees, carob trees, and grass. Rafand al Kharab, these two houses are situated south of Be'er Yaakov, remains of uh, Rafand al Kharab. Another house of Rafand al Kharab. These orchards are in the village land.
were uh, rebel Yezer, which was established on the village. In this uh, field, the general area, used to be the village cemetery. Many trees are here. Agricultural area. We are walking eastward to the cream. at is basically, you know, like I said, not ancient ruins, but ruins of Palestinian villages that were destroyed back in 1948, which over 500 of these villages were erased completely. They were taken out. They were erased from the world. And of course, buildings were destroyed and in almost every case a Jewish city was built somewhere near those villages like you've seen even the memories of the dead were erased too they built parks over cemeteries You know, this is exactly what we're talking about when we talk about ethnic cleansing, 
when we talk about genocide, when we talk about Holocaust, this is a real Holocaust that took place only four years after the so-called Holocaust that still up to now the Jews will not rest until everyone in the world remembers their Holocaust. But yet they go to another part of the world, commit a real Holocaust, a Holocaust that we can actually have names, numbers, number of people killed, number of people who fled, names for these villages, names for these families. But that's what we have. Well, let's go to the phones with Malk, I guess. You're up. Dr. Smiley. Yes. Uh, I just have a few comments. I don't know how uh, valuable they're going to be to tonight's discussion or, or even whether they're relevant. But as you were showing these, uh, this film, the video footage of these uh, villages that have been, as you said, erased, and that is what has happened, is that they've been erased. You know, one of the things that I would like to point out to uh, the Christians who support this you know, all of these Christians who say that this is all part of God's plan, that uh, the Jews are supposed to have that land. You know, when right before Jesus was, uh, was killed by his enemies, his apostles asked him what the end times were going to be like, this great battle between good and evil, and, and all of that said. And he said, he described it, he, he said that it would be uh, uh, the abomination of desolation. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation sitting in the holy place, and we can infer from that that he was talking about the holy land. Mm -hmm. When you see it desolate and erased and replaced with something perverse and violent, everything that was the antithesis of what he was teaching, he said, run for your lives and get out of the place as fast as you can. And clearly, with what you've been talking about here tonight, uh, this is, these are Jesus' words uh, coming to fulfillment. I, that's just something that I would like uh, for these Christians who are in support of this thing to consider, is that you're, you are supporting something that Jesus himself condemned. That's number one. Number two, uh, I assume that you uh, know that the parents of the killed the murdered American peace activist Rachel Corey, that they are uh, headed to Israel for a uh, court case. Well, in the, in the event that you didn't know it, uh, they're already screaming about this in Israel, that there's, that there's actually going to be a court case to determine whether or not any wrong was done in running over this young American woman, not just once, but twice, with a 30-ton uh, bulldozer. Uh, and they're already, the, the, uh, the Israelis are already screaming about this, calling this, this woman a terrorist, saying that this is a, uh, uh, an abrogation of justice, that there should be any court case in this case. And it, and it hit me as I was reading some of these op-ed uh, pieces uh, characterizing Rachel Corey as a terrorist and whatnot. There is no act that Israel supporters will not justify whether it's wiping the Palestinians off the face of the earth, as they have tried to do, whether it's killing a million Iraqis, whether it's going to war against Iran, even dropping a nuclear weapon on an American city. Her supporters, Israel's supporters, will always find a way to justify it. Now, again, I don't know how, how much value that adds to this discussion, but I think that this is something... But those of us in this business, such as, as you and I and the listeners of this program, that we need to take into account we're never going to bring these people around. We're never going to be able to show them the, the, the evil deeds that, that they and their forefathers have done 
and that these people are actually going to feel a, a twinge of conscious, uh, conscience about it. They will never, ever come to that point where they will say, this was wrong. That's just something that we need to keep well, in mind. You know, uh, it's, it's amazing how people are becoming and they are growing uh, number by the moment because, uh, you know, this this has taken place I mean we're talking about 60 years ago and then it repeated itself again in 1967 where the same thing happened the same thing took place it is also happening now as we speak these people are going into homes in East Jerusalem uh -huh. where Muslims and Christians are living and they are kicking people out of their homes and destroying their homes. The Jewish controlled media will not show the people this. And I don't really know if even if they show it to them, if people would realize, well, wait a minute, this is ethnic cleansing. It's against international law. And uh, the, the, this is genocide. And what people don't realize is they are actually paying for this genocide and they are actually paying for this ethnic cleansing because Americans are paying for every penny that Israel is spending in killing the Palestinians but yet because of this Zionist Jewish controlled media people are not able to even are not even allowed to think much less to see what is happening well, I, I would disagree with you on one point, Doctor. I don't think that people are becoming numb to it. I think that, uh, at least in the United States, do uh, you remember the movie Gladiator? Sure. Remember the people, how they would go to watch these gladiators hack each other's pieces, and they were in the crowd, in the crowd where they were in the uh, stands cheering, and, I mean, it was just madness. You know, they... they they were drunk and they were having a great time and they loved watching these people being hacked to pieces. And I think, you know, in, in the United States, because of the fact that we do have this predominant uh, Jewish lens that, that through which all information is filtered, and of course what I'm talking about here is the media, we have, we have begun to think like them as well. Okay, so when we see these, these Arabs being killed, whether they're Christians or Muslims, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just another day at the Colosseum. So uh, I guess people are not able to differentiate between uh, reality and, uh, I guess, myth or uh, fiction. Well, I, I think that that is the product of 50 years of, of having our brains destroyed with this, this, this terrible weapon, this weapon of mass distraction. Uh, known as the Jewish media, and uh, you know, I hate to be I hate to be pessimistic because we all want to we want to find some reason to stay in this fight and to keep fighting. But I really think that in the end, uh, Israel is going to get everything that she wants, and uh, I think that it is going to be exactly as Jesus described it. It is going to be utter desolation. Well, I guess at that time uh, nothing can be done because we will all uh, be slaves to the beast. We already are, Doctor. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, um, there was Mark Glenn, and uh, he's, he's correct. He is correct. And, uh, you know, even if Israel would destroy a whole country, as they have threatened that they can and that they will and they did say that if they will have to go they would bring everybody else with them uh, they'll bring them down with them uh, now Israel has as you know uh, over 400 nuclear bombs they've been having nuclear bombs since the uh, 60s as a matter of fact but uh, unfortunately um, you know what whatever Israel is is doing um, as long as it is not presented to you in the real sense of what is happening, um, you, you're not going to know what is happening. You're not going to know what took place. Now, you know, uh, World War II, um, many, 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 many millions of Christians lost their lives. Uh, 
uh, and these these Christians are um, th these numbers can be verified. Uh, these people have names; they can be accounted for. Uh, but you don't know anything about it. You don't know uh, there was 10 million, 15 million, 20 million Christians that were uh, actually were uh, slaughtered and butchered. Uh, but uh, you don't know because they don't want you to know. But yet you have this 6 million figure drilled into your head, which is a figure that uh, no one can actually prove. No one can actually prove and no one can actually prove exactly what took place in World War II. Well, anyway, to uh, continue with my uh, trip to uh, Palestine, I did enjoy uh, the time that I spent uh, in, um, at the sea. So if we can show some of those uh, pictures that I uh, had in, uh, in uh, Akka, which is uh, a beautiful city by the sea in uh, Palestine. This is at uh, right... Uh, in a uh, in a restaurant uh, right there by the sea where I enjoyed uh, some um, nice uh, fish dinner fresh caught that day from uh, that sea behind me uh, beautiful sea beautiful land beautiful weather beautiful atmosphere uh, it's a land that once belonged to uh, the Palestinians but uh, was taken from them back in 1948. Uh, you know, I, I still, while while I was there, and every time I go there, I can't help but uh, remember, um, you know, how this world can be this cruel um, to uh, to people. How could how could this happen? How could this happen to uh, a whole people? And yet. Uh, even though those people were unarmed, the Palestinians, they were unarmed, they were kicked out of their um, homes and country and cities and towns, uh, that they would end up uh, being known as terrorists. Uh, b b b because, uh, you know, whenever you think of a Palestinian, the, the first thing that would come to your mind is uh, um, probably suicide bombers or uh, terrorism, even though more terrorism was... Uh, um, exerted upon these people by the Jewish terrorists, uh, especially by um, um, Nahem Begin, you know, one who was a notorious terrorist back in 1948, who um, actually made it to become the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Israel. And uh, we, we do have his picture uh, there, uh, Nahem Begin. And, uh, but this is the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea behind me. And uh, this is Mahem Begin, who um, was a notorious, notorious um, terrorist. He had committed uh, atrocities against the Palestinians. One of them is in the village of Deir Yassin, which we also have uh, probably a couple of pictures from Deir Yassin, where uh, they went in there in the middle of the night and killed hundreds of men, women, and children, mainly women, children, and old men, because the uh, younger men were, uh, you know, somewhere trying to protect the land. But they uh, went into this village, and this village uh, of Deir Yassin was uh, uh, the site of uh, a horrible, horrible massacre by the uh, Jews, the Haganah at that time, and by the Stern Gang, who um, went into this village, and it, it became so famous at that time that because of this village, the uh, people had uh, fled other villages because they heard of what took place in the village of Deir and It's exactly the uh, uh, this village that you're looking at, and that's the scene back from uh, 1948. Uh, of course, you know, you, you never see any uh, pictures like this, even during the Holocaust. Um, of course, you know, you have uh, pictures from the Holocaust of uh, tons of people dead, which was uh, after, actually, you know, you did not know exactly what they died from, but this is uh, obviously, uh, you can see how they were butchered. And in this particular massacre, they were actually butchered with uh, knives and axes and... Uh, 
uh, bombs and bullets and everything. The, uh, uh, the, the, these hatred people known as the Jews back in 1948, uh, that's exactly what they had done and that's exactly uh, what you are looking at. But uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, again, because of the media and because they were able to convince um, the world that they were the victims of the Nazis and they were the victims of the uh, Holocaust, uh, whatever they did in Palestine at that time, uh, it was uh, not actually uh, paid attention to by the world, and it still doesn't. Uh, th th still, you know, England, even though England was the uh, the reason and uh, was uh, instrument in uh, 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 bringing these people from Europe to settle in Palestine, and then the uh, this Jewish, uh, uh, I guess, uh, problem was taken over by the United States and adopted by the United States. Of course, it was coerced, just like our congressmen today. They are coerced by these people, uh, by APAC, the American-Israel uh, Public Affairs Committee, uh, who very much controls uh, our politicians. Uh, they, um, they're able to uh, coerce our government, coerce our politicians into voting on things that are un-American and uh, that are anti-American actually um, in many many cases because uh, uh, you know this country has done a lot for Israel that were actually against the interest of the uh, United States uh, such as attacking Iraq you know something that we uh, uh, still uh, deal with um, as a matter of fact, from our area right here, we have uh, people are, uh, you know, we have troops going to Iraq for probably the next nine or 12 uh, months. They will be leaving here soon. So uh, um, we, as uh, the people of the United States, still paying for something that Israel wanted, which is the destruction of Iraq. Uh, as you know, uh, until now, you're probably uh, shaking your head as to why did we go to Iraq? What is it that we have accomplished? Uh, was it really just this horrible dictator called Saddam Hussein? Is that why we went there, killed a million Muslims and destroyed the whole country and we still pay him for it? Uh, tremendous price. Is it just to remove Saddam Hussein? We have a caller on line one. Uh, go ahead, caller. Dr. Salawi? Yes, sir. Uh, those pictures that you were showing, uh, are those were those uh, considered Israeli territory at the time, or what is their current status? Um, what do you mean Israeli territory at the time? Are talking about the black and white pictures? No, the, uh, the pictures of the uh, ex-villages you showed. Were those uh, at the time with the... Uh, the uh, no, designation those, of Israeli territory. No, as, 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 Israeli a matter, territory? as a matter of fact, uh, many of those villages uh, were destroyed and people were killed even before Israel was established back in 1948. And uh, uh, the, back in 1947, the partition plan, uh, which was enacted by the United Nations, had given Israel a portion of uh, the... Uh, of the land, but there was nothing in that petition plan to say that you move people off their land. And uh, many of those villages actually were in the uh, portion that was allocated for the Arab state and before Israel was established. Uh, if, if you uh, know anything about that era, the Israeli uh, uh, terrorism or Israeli terrorist gangs like the, uh, like the Stern Gang and like the Haganah uh, were very much uh, almost uh, semi-formal uh, uh, armies. Uh, there were gangs, uh, armed gangs, that were used to go and terrorize these Palestinian villages and massacre them. Uh, I have one other question. Mm -hmm. uh, could you give me a current rundown as to the state of the Palestinian economy and how people are surviving economically there? Okay. And I'll hang up the list. Thank, thank you. Uh, well, uh, Palestinian economy, there is really not much to show there, uh, how people are living. 
uh, ask uh, how people are surviving in Gaza when um, uh, they are under siege and uh, the Palestinian towns uh, we do have, I've taken some pictures actually of the wall again. Every time I go there, uh, I do take pictures of the wall. So go ahead and show some of these pictures. Uh, the Palestinian uh, economy, no, 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 pictures of, yeah, yeah, here we go. Pictures of these walls. Uh, these walls are all over the, um, uh, the West Bank, and of course they are encircling many uh, of these Palestinian towns. And uh, there will be like one gate, just like the, the case of Bethlehem, where actually I was staying for about four days uh, on this trip. There's uh, a wall surrounding the city, and it goes right in the middle of town with, uh, with one gate. So you can imagine what kind of economy and what kind of um, uh, trade is going on between these Palestinian towns. Uh, mainly people in these Palestinian towns are living off of uh, whatever the land can produce or uh, they might be working for the Palestinian National Authority uh, which is uh, receiving aids from uh, basically the uh, European Union and uh, from some other sources like the United Nations or the United States or uh, you know uh, um, remember the United Nations uh, Oh, okay. I think I put a minute extra on the timer. I apologize. Okay, that's not a problem. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Are you sure it was still on the air? No, I'm positive. Okay. I already switched. Oh, okay, good. <laughs>